Hi, I'm Anthony Weinkoff, co-founder of Embrace Tutoring Educational Services, and welcome to Embrace Tutoring TV, the official YouTube channel for all things related to test prep, academics, and the college admission process. Today, we will be discussing the best tips and strategies for the ACT math section. If you're watching this video, then you already understand the importance of improving your score and have put yourself one step closer to success. Master tip number one is understand the overall format of the ACT math section in terms of your time. A few immediate need to knows. One, the entire ACT math test is 60 multiple choice questions in 60 minutes. Two, you are permitted to use a calculator. And three, no math equations are provided outside of the figures and information within the problems. And four, the problems generally increase in level of difficulty and time as you advance through the test. The overall test format breaks down as follows. Pre-algebra, 20 to 25% of the test. Elementary algebra, 15 to 20% of the test. Intermediate algebra, 15 to 20% of the test. Coordinate geometry, 15 to 20%. Plane geometry, 20 to 25%. And trigonometry, 5%. Going back to the understanding that the problems generally increase in level of difficulty and time as you advance through the test, be mindful that you want to complete the first 25 to 30 questions in less than 20 minutes to allow you more time per problem to focus on the remaining more difficult problems. As a quick tip, if you feel very confident in your math abilities approach in time, we would also recommend starting from question 60 and working your way backwards. Questions 35 through 60 are layered with multi-step problems and equations, which you of course will use smaller pieces to solve questions 1 through 34. Master tip number two is memorize all formulas and common math facts prior to taking the test. You'll be faced with a number of multi-step problems and time is your greatest factor. As you're practicing, you will need to become comfortable enough with the information to move strategically through each problem. For your convenience, we've provided a helpful list of math formulas and common math facts in the description section below. Master tip number three is plug in the answers, a really helpful strategy that will help you solve the problems faster or even evaluate if you have the correct answer on math problems is to plug in the answer choices. When plugging in the answer choices for X, you typically want to start with C which is the middle choice as the answer choices A through E are increasing numerical order. This allows you to gauge if you should then evaluate A or B or D or E, if not C. If C is too big, then attempt A or B. Whereas if C is too small, then attempt D or E. By attempting only two choices, you've saved yourself more time. Do be aware, however, that this strategy comes with practice and anticipation for which types of questions work best for setting up algebraic expressions. Master tip number four is provide real numbers in place of variables. The basic idea of plugging in your own numbers is that you provide real numbers in place of variables or unknowns in your problem. This method can work for a number of problems, but first look and see if the question or answer choices involve variables. If they do, aim for using numbers such as one, two, or three to keep the math fairly simplistic and to focus on the relationships between the numbers. As long as your proposed numbers are consistent with the principles you are presented with in the equation, you can then find the right answer using your own numbers. In summary, one, identify that variables exist within the problem or answer choices, and that plugging in numbers is a possible problem solving method. Two, choose a number to represent each variable and use those numbers to solve the original equation. And three, use the number you chose for your original variable to replace that same variable in your answer options. By doing this, you can test your answer choices and see which answer matches your result. Understanding that this will take some practice, we've provided a link within the description section to several practice problems outlining this method. Master tip number five is translate your word problems into math equations that you can readily solve. Within the ACT math section, word problems are based mostly on written description and do not provide you with an equation. Using your critical reading skills, as well as the key provided within the description section below, however, you were able to translate the description into a workable math problem. For key terms such as sum, increased by, added to, total of, a plus sign is typically used. For difference, decreased by, or subtracted from, a minus sign is used. The keywords product or times represent multiplication, while the keywords divided by or quotient represent division. The key terms equals, is, are, equivalent, and same are represented by an equal sign. You must also be familiar with the is less than or equal to and is greater than or equal to symbols shown here. Master tip number six is to review your calculator functions. Remember that the ACT math section does not provide given formulas or equations, so you need to be as effective with your time as possible. Outside of memorizing the most useful equations, you will also need to be extremely well versed in several quick tip calculator functions to plug in and answer the problems. Because you are only going to be asked to perform basic calculations on the ACT math section, you do not need the most high tech or advanced calculator, but it is in your best interest, one, to verify that your calculator is permitted on the ACT, and two, practice with the same calculator you intend to use on the actual test day. Do everything possible to make sure you familiarize yourself with your calculator 
before test day. Some of the basic calculator functions include finding the square root of a formula, logarithms, exponents, understanding where the pi function is, sine, cosine, tangent functions, and taking a decimal to a fraction or vice versa. For the ACT test, you should try and think of your calculator as an aid, but not a crutch. You do not technically need a calculator to solve the math problems on the ACT. Lastly, it is important for you to be aware that the real focus of your calculator comes with the last 18 to 20 questions that cover more multi-step geometry and basic trigonometry problems. Master tip number seven is practice deeply. This is not just taking random math practice problems and checking your score, but digging deeper and categorizing each mistake until the answer is fully justified. Start by taking several authentic ACT math diagnostics, measuring your progress and identifying areas of weakness for you to go and review. EmbraceTutoring.com provides a number of free supplemental materials to get you started. Work on your approach and your timing. When evaluating your practice test, be absolutely brutal about understanding your mistakes. Deep practice is being your own toughest critic. More important than finding the mistake is seriously understanding why you may have missed that question in the first place. You need to always be able to justify your answer earnestly. This process is important because it allows you to identify your high level weaknesses early on and allows you to manage your time more effectively. I would recommend keeping a log and categorizing your mistakes and questions you're unsure of. Write down the general idea of the question, what you believe the question was asking, and the strategy you will use in the future to answer the question correctly. For more information, check out the link here to our video, the number one best tip for preparing for the ACT deep practice. We hope you found these tips and strategies helpful, but remember if you're a student and would like additional practice tests or sample packets, feel free to visit EmbraceTutoring.com. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your studies.